What's up everybody? I'm Derek. This is Rocking E-Forge. Today I'm going to show you how to forge a center punch. Now I'm going to be using a six and a half inch chunk of three quarter inch round stock. This is 4140, which is a pretty decent medium carbon steel, which is very forgiving, pretty easy to heat treat. This is my go-to steel for making punches and chisels and the like. So without any further ado, let's get it in the fire and start forging this thing out. So we're gonna put a square taper on the end here. And I'm not doing a gr the greatest job at it, but notice I'm tilting the piece that I'm hammering on so that the angle of my hammer down is approximately the same as the angle between the punch and the face of the anvil. That way I get a two-sided taper instead of having a one-sided taper that just slopes one direction. So this is gonna be the struck end of the punch, so make sure you're not getting this taper too skinny at the end, because you're gonna want enough real estate to strike with a hammer. I'm gonna go ahead and do a two inch square taper here without getting too skinny at the end. And then I'll flip it around and start on the business end of the punch. If you're curious, I've got just inside a half inch square here. I'm gonna knock the corners off, but I'm not gonna go to a pure hexagon. All right, so we're just gonna do the same thing on the business end. Now you can probably tell that that edge doesn't quite line up with that edge and this flat face doesn't quite line up with this flat face. I want this square taper to taper up the body and then back down in the same plane on every face. Which means I'm going to have to bring this in back into a more square alignment with the struck end. Now the way I'm going to do that is that next heat I'm going to bring it to the flat face of the anvil and I'm going to strike at an angle as opposed to flat. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna knock these corners off. So this is a pretty standard punch shape, just kind of a hexagon. I'm trying to find my own style of punch that I'd like to forge. And I think the way I'm gonna do that is to slim down the main body of the punch so that it, it's skinnier one direction, a little bit wider in the other. That'll give me a nice way to index my punches. Now granted, this is gonna be a center punch, so indexing isn't really a big deal. But given that I'm experimenting and finding my own style of punches, I'm gonna give that a try and we'll see what happens. I like the way this has turned out so far. The next step, and in my opinion, one of the most important steps, is to do an annealing cycle. I'm gonna put this in the fire, bring this up to an orange heat, and put it in a tub full of vermiculite to cool down very slowly. That's gonna relieve most of the stress that I put in to the steel with my hammer, and prevent cracking or other fatigue-related defects during use in the future.
Alright, now that that annealing cycle is done, it's looking pretty good, but pretty scaled up. So I'm going to take it to the belt grinder. I got a 60 grit belt here, and I'm going to round off the, the struck end of the punch. I'm going to grind the other tip to a flat first, and then grind in the point after that. I think that'll be easier to accomplish. And I'm considering grinding about an inch to two inches worth of steel to a nice polished look. So I've got this thing all polished up and right where I want it, so I'm gonna fire up the forge and get ready to heat treat this thing. A 4140 is a water quench steel, so don't do this with steels like 5160 or 1095, but this is low enough carbon that it can quench in water without breaking. The basics of it is gonna be bring a little more than just the tip to a dull orange, and then I'm gonna quench the first half inch or so in water, and I'm gonna let the heat from the body of the punch bleed back forward toward the tip to temper it in the same cycle so I don't have to do extra tempering in the oven. Now there's a reason I polished the tip other than aesthetics and that's so that I can use an old grinding wheel and scrape off the forge scale and watch the tempering colors run forward from the still red hot portion of the body toward the cooled down portion of the tip that was quenched. And once the tip reaches a straw yellow color, that's my tempering heat in the 400 to 500 degree range without being too precise. And once that color reaches the tip, I know I can quench and scrape off the previous colors or, or some other forge scale and watch those colors run again and do a few tempering cycles that way. Now I tend to work pretty fast while I'm doing this, which is why I'm detailing this now. So watch me do this and then if you need to come back and review the process, go ahead and come back to this little segment. Hopefully that's all I needed to say. Now this is what we call tempering colors. We've got kind of a straw yellow into bronze, into kind of bleeding into a purple, into what's usually called a peacock, into a blue, into what's called a black heat here at the tip. Now I'm gonna put a chart of the temperatures that those correspond to right here, and you can screenshot that for future reference. And the reason this is so commonly used for tempering is because at different temperatures, steel oxidizes these various colors from about 400, 400 degrees all the way up to near 1,000. And those colors are generally pretty accurate to a pretty reasonable degree. Now I'm keeping this up off the face of the anvil because the anvil acts as a heat sink and it's going to suck all the heat out of the body and I want that heat to bleed forward toward the tip as much as possible so I try to keep it off that heat sink in order to maximize the number of cycles I can get. I usually get two to three but with how thick this body is I'm hoping to get one more. Once you've got to the point where you don't think you'll get another tempering cycle out of it, you can quench the whole thing and kind of arrest the process. Now if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, drop a comment, hit subscribe, ring that notification bell. If you want to support the channel and make sure I can afford to keep making content, please consider becoming an honorary striker on my Patreon, where you get exclusive access to director's cuts of my videos, 
occasional surveys where you can directly impact the content that I produce, your name or username in the credits of every video I produce from here on out, and more as the channel grows. So thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.